Good morning, welcome back to Black Bear Forge. Today, I thought some of you wing nuts would like to see me, I mean, I thought some of you guys would like to see me make a wing nut. I have a piece of 5 8 square bar, I just made a wild guess, I want a 5 16 wing nut where I want this to go, and I want it pretty big because I want it to be easy to turn, it's something that I'll adjust on a regular basis. So this 5 16 bar is inch and three quarter long. That's about 16 millimeters by 45 millimeters, Again, this was just a random decision on my part. If you need something specific, do better calculations than that. But I think this should be a pretty quick, simple project. So let's head over to the forge and get our piece of bar hot. So the first question we have to ask ourselves is which came first, the hole or the wings? I think you could do it either way. If you punch the hole first, it's going to be easier to get it centered. It's going to be easier to flip it over, work from the back side. And if you need to adjust the perimeter of the hole, it'll be easier to do if you do the hole first. On the other hand, if you do the hole first, it's also going to be easier to damage it when you do the wings. So you might want to do the wings first. I'm not sure it really matters. One way or the other, you're going to wish you had done it the other way. So I think I'm going to go ahead and punch the hole first. Then I'm just going to try not to screw it up when I do the wings. Then after doing the wings, we can redrift the hole. And I'm only going to punch it to about a quarter of an inch. I want 5 sixteenths, my final hole size. I want to be able to drill with the appropriate tap drill size so I don't want the hole too big when I get to that point. I still want to make sure I've got all the material I need to cut good threads. Of course, it's a tapered punch, so part of the hole does end up a little bit on the big side. So there's a hole all the way through. Not sure where the biscuit went, but that's what we need for now. I'm just going to go ahead and put a quarter inch drift through there. And I just make sure that it's a reasonable size. I'll drill it out to the tap drill size for the 5 16 wing nut though. I'm going to thin it out just a little bit too. I think, think this ends up looking a little bit too thick to me. So now I just want to try and thin out the part that will be the wing without collapsing the hole. I also want to keep that all on one side so this can go up against a flat surface. You say it might have been better to do it the other way, but I'm not, not convinced one way or the other at this point. Cross pin. We'll definitely have to drift this again when we're done. So that's starting to form one wing. These can just be whatever shape you want them to be. If you're making a lot of these, you might figure out a nice guillotine tool die for them or something like that. Some sort of a fullering jig. But I don't make a lot of wing nuts, so I'm not that worried about it. We want to do exactly the same thing on the other side.
That definitely messes up my original hole here. Which I really expected. Now my wings are a little off, so I'll go to the vise and fix those. It's a little straighter. It's like this wing's off to one side a little bit. One place else we'd go here is just the the hardy hole and use it as kind of a lineup tool so the swell can drop down in there. I think the next heat I'm going to drift that hole back out again. And then we might flat actually I'm gonna I think I'm gonna flatten it a little bit more. I think it's still a little bit thick. I'm just gonna find a big bar or big round end flat punch to push that down. I have this handset that might work. It's flat but square, but if it fits between the wings, it'd be a good choice. If not, I have this flat bottom round punch with a nice radius edge. It's one of the figure carving tools. Good for punching eye sockets and things like that. That one would definitely work. Uh, this one I think is going to fit just fine. It defines everything just a little better. Of course, it squeezes the wings off at funny angles again, so we're going to have to go back to the vise and fix that. This is the fiddly stuff. Just do whatever you feel like it needs. I notice my hole is a little bit of a slot on this side, which is an interesting side effect of the forging that I didn't anticipate, because on this side it's a slot the other direction, and it's closed up enough I'll be able to open it. But I think there's still enough meat in there that we'll easily be able to get exactly the, the hole size I want. We're just going to use the same pin punch again. Or drift, I should say. It's not really a punch. It looks like I'm going to bend that a little bit. That's no good. I went ahead and straightened and cleaned up the drift, make sure the end was nice and smooth so it would want to go in just a little bit easier. It's not unusual for these skinny drifts to bend like that. But that does help. And I think now it's pretty much down to a file or a grinder. And of course you can leave these wings just as forged if you want to. I just like the more refined look. So I did a little grinding, now we'll do just a little bit of filing on it.
And of course, get rid of any sharp edges on the wings where your fingers are going to be. And according to my little chart here, the proper drill bit size for a number for a 5 16 by 18 hole is a letter F. I have a letter F. Well, that just barely took any material off the inside of that hole, so I did not have the hole as small as I really would have liked it. I think there's enough to get some good threads cut. This is not going to be a high strength application. But if there isn't, I will drill this larger, drill it for a 3 8 bolt, and then tap it for 3 8 and it'll be a great wing nut for something else some other time. And then for the application I needed this for, I'll just make another one. But that's an excuse to try a different method of making a wing nut. It certainly isn't just falling right through there, so that's definitely cutting some good threads. Hard to hold on to in the vise though. But can hold on to it just fine for this application. Because this is so meaty, I think we'll get plenty of threads, even if they're not as deep or as full of thread as we'd like. There'll be so many passes on a piece this thick. And looking in there, that really cut some very nice threads. I think we were just right at exactly the right size. The only real problem is the bottom is not quite right, but that really doesn't hurt anything. And of course, I'll finish this up with a nice wire brushing to clean it up and blacken it because I think it will look better as black iron than filed. And before it's completely cool, I'm going to give it the paste wax treatment. Anybody that's been watching for a while is pretty used to this routine. And I don't bother to show it in every video because it looks at pretty much the same. Piece should be just hot enough to smoke a little bit. Wipe off the excess wax after it sits for a little while and let it finish cooling. So what do I need the wing nut for? I've got this little camera arm over here that just had a nut and a bolt at the pivot point. So if I needed to tighten it or loosen it, I had to get a wrench. But a wing nut, I can weld the bolt head in. Then I can just use the wing nut anytime I need to loosen it and make an adjustment. Then it's a nice complement for the thumb screw that we made in an earlier video. Well, that's just me winging it while I make a wing nut for all you wing nuts out there. But seriously, this is just one way to approach making a wing nut. There are lots of ways you can do this. A very classic blacksmithing method of doing a wing nut is to do it in a flatter stock. Just make sure it's thick enough flat stock that you can get enough threads for what you need to use the wing nut for. So for this, I'd use probably 5 16 maybe 3 8 flat stock. But then you draw the ends out and then scroll them up so you've got kind of a little mustache or a C-scroll with the hole of the wing nut coming right up between the two curls on the mustache. But there are probably other ways to make wing nuts. Hindsight being 2020, I think this would have been better to forge the wings and then drill the hole instead of punching it. It's always a lot of fun to punch holes and it's good to know that as blacksmiths we have that capability to punch a hole if we need to. 
but the actual mechanics of this nut would be better if the hole had been drilled at the very end instead of punching it and then having a few issues with how much material there was in the hole. For this application, more than enough, but if it needed to be higher strength, maybe not enough. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down below. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends or on social media if you'd like, but then make time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next one.